Hey guys, I am getting ready to plant my uh, fountain garden area back there. I have a few of these grow bags. These are seven gallon grow bags and I really like the quality. I got them from Amazon. They're like really cheap. Uh, I got a packet of five and that's just the right amount that I need for back there. I am going to plant single dahlias in here, nothing else, just one dahlia tuber, the ones that I started indoors. And that's basically what I'm going to put back there on the bench. And I'm really excited. I really hope that these uh, plants are going to be amazing in the summer. So hopefully here in a few months, I can give an update on how they're doing. But before we start with any of these, let me show you my Vatshiva that is blooming already. I have quite a mess here in front of the containers where I have my David Aston rose, but you guys, I love, love how the rose is blooming. I added three nasturtiums in front of that container, but there is nothing else in there. I just don't want anything else taken away from this rose. And my goodness, this rose is gorgeous. Just so gorgeous. A lot of you are probably wondering why my roses are blooming already. And this is the only one that is blooming. I purchased this rose as a plant already. It already had buds on it and I planted it here. And I am sure, I am very sure, very positive that it got started somewhere warmer, probably inside a greenhouse. And that's probably why this one is ahead of, of the blooming time compared to my other roses. My gosh. You guys, the smell is just quite amazing. It has been raining a lot. It has been raining, raining quite a lot here in central Indiana. And these roses get in definitely plenty of water. And it's just loving it here. I absolutely adore this rose. I am literally in the middle of planting most of my seedlings. I am just going areas little by little. But my gosh, I just have to make a quick stop to show you this ro this rose is you guys it's gorgeous and it has been here for less than a couple of months like i mentioned i bought the huge plant when i put it here i show you that in a video and my gosh it is everything and more than i wanted it to be i i love it the medium that i am using to fill all of these grow bags seven gallon grow bags is Regular potting mix, whatever I can find locally, I like to use pro mix that I find at Menards because it's one of my favorites. So if I can just get a few bags of those at my local Menards, then I am a happy girl. No, they're not paying me to say this, but I know that sometimes you have questions about what potting mix I use. This is the one. And what I'm going to do here for the dahlias is that I am going to add a little bit of warm castings. and. I am only adding this because I already had a little bit left in that bag. So I am adding it into the soil. I figured it will help. But I'm also using some vegetable and earth fertilizer from Dr. Earth that I find locally. Uh, long ago, I heard somebody that is a professional growing dahlias saying that they use the same fertilizer that they use for the tomato. So that just kind of stuck with me. So I am not using anything in particular for my dahlias this year. I'm using this vegetable fertilizer and that's going to work just fine. I am trying to combine all of these three ingredients together so that I can just fill my bags and I don't have to worry about adding anything at this point. Maybe in the future I will add some fertilizer. I still haven't decided what I'm going to be using, but I need to do some research. And if you have experience growing dahlias in containers, what fertilizer do you use as a regular treatment? Uh, do you use something liquid? Do you use something in slow release? Let me know in the comments. Using these dahlias that I already um, sprouted indoors about four or six weeks ago. I'm pretty sure that I show you guys how I did this. I have basically tubers here that are, are in regular potting mix, probably some pro mix, um, that I started indoors under LED lights. I added, I put one tuber in them and they have been growing there. I already pinch most of them. I believe that they are all pinch so that I don't have to worry about doing that. 
Let me show you what pinching does for a dahlia. And this goes for all of the flowers that you should be pinching. I, when this plant was about this tall, I came here and I cut the top and this pushed two side branches. This guy right here and this guy right here to grow. And then I have more side branches coming along the stem. Hopefully you can see that clearly. And this one is just going to be a nice bushy dahlia, which is going to produce us a bunch more of extra flowers. So cool. Okay, it's a little sunny, somewhat sunny. So now that I have my dahlias here nice and going, I'm going to put one plant only, nothing else, no other plants here in this bag. And I hope that it's plenty, plenty of space for them to grow. Look at that, look at that beautiful, beautiful amount of roots. So as you can tell, the stem that is coming from this dahlia, the sprout is right at tuber level. But in reality, I really need to plant this tuber about this, this much. Why? Because other ways, as the plant starts growing, it starts getting taller, it's just going to flop. It's just going to fall down easily if it wasn't buried this height. And when you plant your tubers, if you're just planting the tubers uh, that haven't been sprouted, you definitely want to uh, bury them four to six inches underground so that the sprouts that come from them are nice and strong and they're somewhat supported. So this is a Rose Toscano. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful dahlia here. So I am going very deep planting this dahlia. That's just going to be fine. This is perfect. You can see here how far the dahlia has been, has been buried. And while I have them here, while I have access easily to these grow bags, I am going to add some mulch. And I am using regular wood mulch, like the stuff that I use for my flower beds, just to make sure that the soil is not completely exposed. I wanna make sure that these bags keep the moisture nice and strong, and mulch is going to help us do that. This is regular brown mulch that I got from Lowe's. This is the stuff that I use. They normally have a sale in the spring for like $2 a bag. That's when I grab a bunch of them. So right here, that's how my dahlia is really going to stay for the rest of the season. And that's basically the same process that I am going to do for the rest of my dahlias. The dahlias are set and I am happy with how they look. The crow bags are not quite showy and that's okay. They're going to be hidden there eventually this summer with everything else growing around them. Uh, if you are wondering how I am going to support those dahlias once they're fully grown, I am going to be using that diamond trellis that is attached to the wall. 
and I am going to secure that with either some string or some stretchy tape. I'll figure that out later, but I am going to use that trellis as a as an anchor for the dahlias once they're fully grown. And I'm excited to see how these develop here, you guys. My my boxwoods on the side are looking a little bit sad. I do not blame them from the kind of winter that we had. I am going to give them some fish emulsion. I'll probably have to get that because I'm out, but I am going to give them a trimming of that. I'm going to give them a little bit of a prune and hopefully they will bounce back. Those plants have been there for at least three years and I will be really sad if I lose them as well. But that is it for today. I hope that you guys are enjoying this kind of videos. I figured that I would just show you really quick how I do this because a lot of you are growing dahlias for the first time this year. While I am not a professional, I am just happy to share what I'm doing. So hopefully you can pick up a thing or two. Thank you for being here, you guys, and until the next time.